you surprised that the Buffalo Bills finally made the playoffs? I'm sure as hell was. But this is a team that, just kind of like last year, it's, it's not very good. But maybe it can surprise. But maybe it can surprise us. His quarterback is not Tyrod Taylor. I don't know why the Bills keep kept chasing him away. He was a solid starting quarterback, but I guess they want better. I don't know. They'll get it from this list. They drafted. They traded up for Josh Allen. Uh, they signed AJ McCarron. They still have Nathan Peterman, who, according to reports, is doing well in minicamp. But then again, it's minicamp. Who gives a shit who's doing well? It's about really once they step in the fe- step on the field and put on pads. But oof, they're hoping Josh Allen steps up and performs well, not just because they trade him up, but because McCarron's a can be a solid starter. But again, it's just been very limited into what he can do. He hasn't really started much. And uh, Nathan Peterman, yeah, through the five interceptions. But, yeah, they really want Josh Allen to stop up, step up and be the starting quarterback, be their next Jim Kelly. And then looking at the running back, is up LaShawn McCoy. Still great as ever. Their backup might be an open position battle. Um, they got a few guys they might want to try out, but it's going to be McCoy until... Uh, until he shows any signs of decline. Wide receiving core is very, very underwhelming. They traded for Kellen Benjamin, but he's been decent. They have a couple other players, Zay Jones, um, Jeremy Curley, Andre Holmes. But there's really no one there that's that's really going to help this young quarterback. Because regardless of who you have starting, whether it's McCarron or Allen, you need a he need a good support cast to really help him. Even a guy like, you know, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, if you give him just a bunch of low tier practice squad players, he's not they're not gonna perform exponentially. They need help every now and then. They will need help. I mean, when you look at Tom Brady when he had Randy Moss in his first year, he had a career year. Drew Brees, when he had a, when he has a good receiver like Michael Thomas, he has he performs well. And it's the same thing when it goes for these other wide receivers. When you get them a really, really good wide receiver, they turn out to be great players. Even when Payne Main was with the Colts, he had guys like T- Marvis Harrison and even and even Reggie Wayne. And the tight ends, it's okay. I mean, they drafted Nick. They have Nick near O'Leary. They also have Charles Clay. But again, it's overall solid. Just nothing really standing out. Also, line's a bit of a question. I mean, they trade away uh, Cordy Glenn, and it's most likely going to be uh, Deion Dawkins playing the left tackle position. Um, pro- probably they're going to have Jordan Mills play the other tackle position. They're going to have a f- they're going to f- move a lot of players around and see who kind of sticks, especially interior with uh, uh, Richie Incognito not being on the team anymore. Then of course. I think John Miller is still going to be one of the other starting guards, guards, starting guards. But they're going to, but well, they're going to move a lot of people around. Probably train camp. They might have different guys starting at different positions week after week. And if they can't find an interior, but they got some good tackles, I wouldn't be surprised if they throw Dawkins at guard. And overall, this offense is just a, a big question mark. You don't know who's. Outside of a couple players that you know is going to start, it's still filled with a lot of question marks. You have no idea what's going. You have no idea, you know, what's what's really going to turn out to be. I'd be surprised if this team gets inside the top half of the league, but this is this is a bottom half offense, and it's not. I don't really see this team really be really carrying uh, this entire team. I don't see, I don't really see a, a clear winner at the starting quarterback position because I don't think Josh Allen is that good. And I'm not, and I'm not entirely faithful in McKinnon. And the wide receiving core, the main support cast is not exactly going to, going to stand out and help this team. It's, it's a very middling team. And of course you got the defensive line, the defense and defensive line. I was surprised when they signed Trent Murphy to as much as they did. I think they gave him like a three-year deal worth $30 million. And 
from what I've from one report I saw, maybe Shaq Lawson is competing for a um, rotational spot because they got a couple players they want they do want to try out. Of course, it's Murphy and Jerry Hughes, but it's I think a couple other players like uh, geez, uh, Eddie Vent Ben Hoys and and that guy they signed from the Giants. But oh, but otherwise this. This is a decent. It's decent. They're, again, they're just kind of hoping that they're kind of hoping that these that you know Trent Murphy will come back from his injury. And from what I've heard, Shaq Lawson hasn't been entirely dependent. I get hasn't been entirely good. So it's uh it's pretty uh, underwhelming to see to see him disappointed like that. But also shows kind of how bad Rex Ryan is at drafting. And then, you know, on defensive tackle, they got a few players. They drafted Harrison Phillips, who was a combine warrior. Uh, they signed Starla Tule, and they still have Kyle Williams still playing on his last leg. It's a good... I think the interior is going to be much better than the, ed, than the edge rushing, but, hey, if they can if they can turn out to some uh, good stars and starters... I'm all for it. I'm really looking forward to that. I think the defense is really going to be better than it was last season. I think the defense is really going to improve with with uh, Sean McDermott being the the coach and all. I got and more credit I get has to be given to him, which I'll go on later on. But then looking at the linebackers, they drafted Tremaine Edmonds, and this was a problem overall because when he because I do remember this. Do remember what what was said? They traded away Marcel Darius to the Jaguars during the season, and now they signed Starla Tule. Why? Because they they were terrible against run once they got rid of Darius, and it's weird because I think Darius is better than Latule, but they got rid of him, and they don't say it was for money because I think they're still overpaying Latule. And the linebackers, you know, they they dropped Tremaine Emmons because they wanted bet because they want you know, better, better performance. They also drafted Matt Milano. They also drafted Matt Milano last season, and it's an all right linebacking core. Just you know, I don't see Preston Brown or anyone else. Unless I miss, unless I miss him at some point. But this is a this is an okay linebacking core. I mean, I was kind of shocked when they end up getting Tremaine Edmonds, but. Who knows? Who knows how Edmonds is going to do? Who knows how well he's going to perform? But the cornerback core, the cornerbacks, and the safeties, this is actually this is actually pretty good. Trey Trey Y performed much better than than anticipated. Uh, then you had the safety combo of Micah Hyde and Jordan and Jordan Poyer. Being really good, and they drafted a lot of players, and they also signed Fonte Davis, hoping he can stay healthy. But wouldn't hold my breath. Wouldn't hold my breath. And of course, you know they drafted Saran Neal from Jacksonville State, Teron, Teron Johnson from Weber State. I mean, they got a lot of players. They want to just kind of see who sticks, essentially. But I, I do trust this this being a very talented and very. And very good uh, secondary. This is actually one of the strong suits for the team, and it's and it's still pretty good, still a pretty good strong suit. I think they might have Micah High play more corner, and maybe have Serrano with Jordan po Jordan Poyer playing the safeties. But this is a very good secondary, and I do like this defense. I think it could be very good, still be very good, probably close to top. Probably close to top half of the league, depending how their offense does. And I'm pretty sure they're just going to have to. I'm pretty sure it's, it will have to be the defense that will have to carry the offense. Although I don't know if this team could really make the playoffs again. I mean, they have. I mean, they do have a tough schedule playing against the Chargers and the Ravens, and, a, and of course, they'll have to play the NFC North. They still have some tough opponents in the NFC. In the, in the AFC South, I'm sorry. And of course, you know, so they'll play the Patriots twice. But I will say this. It is pretty favorable for them in some in some areas. Once they get past the Titans, the only real tough game is going to be the Patriots. Of course, you know, at, at, 
actually after the Packers, after the first four games, but just before the bye week. They have to play the Titans, Texans, Colts, Patriots, Bears, and Jets. And the only real tough game is going to be the Patriots. It's just... And, and, I, and outside of the games between week 5 to week 10, it's just a lot of... Uh, it's These games could be classified as going either way. Sure, the Titans... Sure, the Titans look like they can beat them on paper. Well, there's, well, they got four weeks to prepare for them. Then, of course, you know, and then, of course, the Texans, but again, can go either way. I do find a lot of these games going either way either way for them. It's, and even after the bye week, the two tough you have two tough games, the Jaguars and the Patriots. And again, they could go either way. And even, and even so, well, I'm not talking about the game against the Jaguars and the Patriots. I think they, they're outclassed, but the rest of them. They have to play the Dolphins twice and the Jets one last time, and then the Lions. And those games can go either way. It all depends, you know, how the quarterback situation goes. How the de If the defense can stay, gr can stay great. How the wide receivers step up, etc. But with all said and done, it's very unlikely they'll be back in the playoffs unless... You know, Sean McDermott turns out to be enough, turns out to be a good coach, coaching a team that's not that doesn't have a ton of players, a ton of uh, good players, but can still turn out to be a good season. I mean, he overcame the loss of Marcel Darius and the loss of that, you know, suffering run defense and turned out a playoff team. And that's why I think they might go eight and eight. I can see this team definitely going eight and eight and showing showing something. I don't know if they'll go. To the playoffs, but this is a this is a very middling team. At worst, it's probably a three and thirteen team. Uh, just seeing on how uh, on how this team go on how on how their quarterback functions because I think because here's the thing: a bad quarterback can definitely drag down a team, and if um, and if there's major struggles at quarterback, it's definitely going to drag down this team, no matter how talented that defense is. That concludes this video.